Did you see the movie Cool Hand Luke with Paul Newman? One of his most enduring roles and one of the greatest scenes in that movie. You know, first of all, Cool Hand Luke, he's, he's this uh, small town Alabama hood. And one day he's out, he's drunk, and he's cutting the tops off of parking meters, and he gets busted and sent off to the prison camp. And so the, the prisoners are out on this hot asphalt road one day in their chains, and they're shoveling asphalt onto the road. Boss man with the mirrored sunglasses and the white cowboy hat, shotgun, yelling at him, hurry up, boys, hurry up. Can you imagine more grubby, awful work than shoveling asphalt in chains on a hot Alabama summer day? And they're shoveling, they're moaning and groaning. And finally, Cool Hand Luke says, boys, boss man wants speed. Let's give him speed. And he hollers. And they start shoveling like this. Dragline looks at him and says, come on, boys, let's keep up. And they're all shoveling away. Boss man doesn't know what to do. He doesn't have enough bullets to shoot all of them. They finished the road two hours early, and they're huffing and puffing, hanging on their shovels. <sighs> and one of the guys says to Luke, what do we do now, Luke? And he just smiles, and he goes, nothing. Now, think about what just happened there. One minute, you had these men doing this awful, grubby, miserable work, feeling terrible, boss man yelling at them. One minute later, they're playing a game. They're saying to boss man, you can control our bodies, but you cannot have our souls. What happened there? And in a word, it was encouragement. Luke gave them a spark, gave them a shot of encouragement and said, let's go, boys. I'm Joe Ty, CEO of Values Coach, and I'm your coach for this course on the 12 Core Action Values, which we're very close to wrapping up. And today we're talking about encouragement, which is the third cornerstone of Core Action Value number 12, leadership. You know, more than anything, that's what leaders do. I mean, they set an example, they set high expectations, but what they really do is they encourage us to be the most we can be. They encourage us to accomplish the things that are important to us. And that's the first thing. I'm going to share a couple of strategies, and the first is this. Help people believe in themselves. In the workbook that you have, Les Brown, there's a quote from Les Brown in one of his books, and he says, that's the most important thing leaders do, is they help people find that belief in themselves. You know, Mary Kay Ash, one of the leaders that I profile in my book, All Hands on Deck, about building a culture of ownership. Mary Kay Ash used to give her beauty consultants a pin with a bumblebee. Now, why a bumblebee? Why not an eagle or a lion or some other motivational creature? Because according to aerodynamic theory, a bumblebee should not be able to fly. The wings are too small, too weak for that big fat body. And Mary Kay would say, don't you ever tell a bumblebee that she can't fly and don't you ever let anybody else tell you that you can't fly. You have to believe in yourself. That's what leaders do. They encourage us to believe in ourselves. They also appreciate that it is an emotional business. All business is emotional business ultimately. I was once having lunch with the CEO of the largest producer of corporate training videos in America at the time. And we were talking about effective communication strategies. And Art, I was about to take a bite of spaghetti as I recall, and Art just sort of out of the blue said, Joe, if you really want to reach an audience, you've got to have sex with them. <laughs> I kind of choked, I went, all of them? <laughs> He said, S-E-X, significant emotional experience. He said, if you're not touching people here, if you don't make people laugh, if you don't make them cry, if you're not touching them emotionally, you're really not going to reach them in any other meaningful way. And he's right. And the good news is that that is something that you as a leader can learn how to do. You know, I'm frequently appalled when I see managers or salespeople stand up in front of a room and read a script. I mean, that doesn't move us. You, you, you move people with stories. You move people by telling stories, sharing stories, selling stories. And the good news is you can learn how to do those things. Now, if, if you're a Sparkplug Plus member, of course, you can get my special report on presenting yourself with power. Send me an email. I'll be happy to send it to you. And we also have a DVD. I did a workshop on having sex with your audience. And I'm happy to send that to you at no charge if you're a Plus member. The third thing that leaders have to do is they have to be intolerant of the things that discourage us. And in particular, I mean by that toxic emotional negativity. 
And it is rampant in many workplaces. People hanging around complaining, gossiping, rumor mongering, pointing fingers, passing the buck, blame game, passive aggressive behavior. And that drags everybody down. And over time, the environment of a workplace is defined by two things. What you expect and what you tolerate. And what you tolerate will dominate what you say you expect. So if you tolerate that, that form of toxic emotional negativity, over time, that becomes the standard. And it's really hard to encourage people when, the, when you have that sort of toxic negative environment. You, you need to be very intolerant of that. Now, when, when I'm talking about encouragement, I don't always mean, although sometimes I do, but I don't always mean rah, rah, shaking the pom-poms, you know, the motivational speaker, which is an oxymoron, of course. Sometimes encouragement means pushing people out of their comfort zone. Sometimes encouragement means pushing people to do the things that they don't want to do, that they're afraid to do. Sometimes encouragement means tough love. You know, anybody who's ever participated in any kind of athletics with a coach knows that the coach yells at you, pushes you, makes it hurt because the coach knows the only way you can be a successful athlete is if you push yourself. And that's encouragement, even though at the time it doesn't feel terribly loving. And finally, I do a lot, a lot of my pro bono work is with support groups. And, and you know, it's amazing the, the warmth you feel, the, the way people support each other. I've never seen anybody, with very rare exceptions, I've never seen anybody leave a support group meeting worse than they came in. People always leave with a little more hope, a, a shot of inspiration, maybe a new idea, maybe a new friend. And I've always wondered, why can't the workplace be like that? Why can't we come in at 8 o'clock or whenever in the morning with a smile on our face, and then at 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock or whenever you go home, go home physically tired but emotionally and spiritually uplifted because of the work you've been privileged to do and the people you've been privileged to work with. That's what a support group environment would be like. And you know, there are places like that. Probably the most important thing is this, and that is it's easy to, it's a paradox we've talked about before. It is easy to be encouraging when things are going great. It is easy to be encouraging when the phone is ringing, sales are coming in, you've got money in the bank. It's really hard to encourage people when you yourself are feeling discouraged. And that's when you have to, as they say in AA, a great support group, you have to fake it until you make it. Because a big part of your job is to keep people, other people encouraged. Winston Churchill, in the darkest days of World War II, said, there's only one sin, and that is we must not despair which is kind of the opposite of being encouraged. In the workbook, there's the story of, a very brief version of the story of Ernest Shackleton, whose ship, the, the Endurance, was trapped in Arctic ice back in 1916, and he and his men spent 635 days trapped in the Antarctic. Now, if you want to get a feel for what that was like, go sit in your, fr your freezer, close the door, and come out two years from now. <laughs> That's, that was a horrible experience, but he knew his number one job was to never let any of his people lose hope, to encourage them. That's our job as leaders, to encourage people, to help people believe in themselves, and to never quit.